Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to embed and open Excel file objects within PowerPoint. So what does that mean? Let's say, for example, we have in slide 2 here, this looks like a worksheet in Excel. And in fact, it is kind of like a worksheet, a Excel worksheet within a PowerPoint. So if I click it, you notice that it lets me select it. It looks like a drawing, but if I, and you can uh, format it uh, as a drawing object, but if I double click it, it's going to ask me if I wanted to convert this into a chart and do some editing. Well, let's not do that. Let's just edit it. And once you do that, we will have this container. It's going to be basically an Excel worksheet contained within PowerPoint. You can see that I also have Excel in my um, on my desktop, but you can see the Excel ribbon show up here. It's green. Have you ever noticed that this is an Excel 2016, by the way, and PowerPoint 2016. So it shows up here within the PowerPoint window. So it's kind of in there. So you can do all your editing, uh, click back out, and it looks like just a normal like table, uh, regular table in PowerPoint. But it's actually it's Excel embedded in. Now, if you didn't want to have that there, you just wanted to, uh, let's say you have a lot of bullet points, and you just wanted to be able to double click an Excel object or an Excel file to bring it up within there, you didn't want to have the table show up. You can have it here and have that logo there. If I double click here, you'll also notice now it's going to do the same thing. It's going to bring up Excel and in this case, it's going to bring up Excel in its uh, native format outside of PowerPoint. You can see here, if I kind of minimize this a little bit, this actually Excel as the separate application and it's not contained within PowerPoint. So you can do your editing in it. Uh, maybe I'll put something like uh, another number here. I'll close it and it's going to save it within this particular uh, container. If I double click it and it's going to open up again, you'll see that the changes that are in there should have been saved. So that 100 that I put in there. So you can see that 100 that I put in there is in there. So let's close this. Right click, select close. And let's go to our example here on slide four. Now in this example, this is actually not uh, creating the Excel in the file. See, the, the other two examples have the Excel data contained within PowerPoint. In this particular example, this is actually an Excel file that's sitting off of um, a folder that I have. This first example is basically the, that it's taking a snapshot of that Excel file and putting it into PowerPoint. So if I double click it, you notice that it's going to do the same thing it did in slide two. It's going to have this particular set of data, this data range and this chart, and it's going to envelop it within PowerPoint. You can see that I have my green banner up here indicating to me that it's Excel. And if I can do some changes in here, let's say I do, I change that to 263, press enter, oops, click outside and you notice now that it's changed here on the chart, right? And that's one way that we can put a, a, a file from Excel outside and still link to it. But this file originally came from a folder. I'll show you the folder later on. Um, my slide five here, this example, in this case, what it's doing is it's not enveloping that Excel file in here. It's linking to that file. So any changes that are made to that file will affect this particular chart, if I went outside of PowerPoint and I made some changes, it affects this chart, but it's not going to affect this chart. So you see what happens here? So this example in slide five shows it where we are linking to another file outside of PowerPoint, but any changes that are done on that file outside of PowerPoint will show up in PowerPoint. So for example, let me bring up the file that I used to create this. As you can see, we had the 099, 99, and 96 here. So it shows up here, right? If I went to change this, let's change this to 100 and close, save, and close. Click that and save it. If I go back in here and right click and click update link, you'll know, notice that it's changed. This is going to change to 100 for that particular cell value. It's going to take a little bit of time here, but it changed that cell value. So that's directly linked to that file. Now I'll show you how to create these different embedded Excel objects. 
So this is the last example I'll show you how to create here where we have actually the same thing, this the same content here, but if we don't want to show it in the chart uh, and the contents in there, we just want to show a logo for it, you can create just the logo for it. So if I double click this particular logo, it's going to open up the Excel file in a separate window. So this example, the, the data is not linked. I didn't select the, the linked data, so basically it embedded a copy of the Excel file within PowerPoint. So you don't see that change there, right? I'll show you where we would select the link update so we can do that. So let's see how we can create these different type of objects, uh, these ex different Excel type objects in PowerPoint. I'm going to first delete everything here. Select that, press delete, and save that. So hopefully it gets rid of any of the links. And let's create a couple new slides. All right, let's create a couple on the slide here. I'm just going to press the F4 key to create some more slides. F4 will duplicate your last action. So let's do it there. And the first slide, what if we wanted to create just the Excel type of file? I would go to insert and insert an object. And all I want to do is maybe create an Excel table within there. So I can just select, I'll just select the worksheet and click OK. And since I've created it, it's going to give me a container within PowerPoint. It's going to populate it with um, these blank cells here. And I can just create anything, right? I type one, two, three. And if I click outside of it, I have my table here. And it's basically an Excel file encapsulated within PowerPoint. Now, if I wanted to create just an object there, I can go click on object. And I just wanted to have a the same thing. I had my worksheet. And I want to display it as an icon. I don't want to have a table show up. I just want to have the icon show up. I just click on there and click OK. As you can see, it opened up Excel in its standalone application. I can type anything here and close it. It will save it as an icon there if I double click it. Uh, this is an encapsulated Excel file, an object file within, within PowerPoint, and it's going to have that data there, right? So this is something that you can create within PowerPoint. Now, if I already have an Excel file, in this example, if I already have an Excel file, I just wanted to kind of get the information from it, I can do the same thing. Click on object, and instead of creating new, I want to create from a file, and it's going to ask me to browse for that file. So I'll go ahead and browse for it. Here I have the file that I want to embed. Just double click that, and I'm going to stay with these particular default settings first to show you what this would look like. And this is going to give me a picture of the file in there and or that worksheet, the active worksheet that is in there. So you're going to see that kind of draw out within uh, the, this particular PowerPoint slide. And you can see that it drew out the table and it drew out the chart here. Now, if I wanted to create something that linked to it, so what, what happens here is you'll notice that if I'd made any changes to that file, let me bring up that file again. And if I did any changes to that file, it will not show up in this particular slide. Let me bring up that file now. So I've brought up that file. Let's change 100 back to 0. Close the file. And actually, I don't need to close the file. I'll just, I'll just save it. Let's just save it. Click Save. Let's go back into the PowerPoint and see if I can do any updates. So I, I right clicked on the object here. And it doesn't let me do anything. It just lets me edit it, lets me open it. You don't have any selection where you can update the data um, for your link. Now, if we did it another way, We'll go to object, object, insert object, and create from file. And I'll go ahead and source that file again. So here's my file again. Double click that. It's going to bring that in. And before I select OK, I'm going to select this link box. And once that's selected, it's going to bring in the data. And there's some there's some variation in terms of how it brings it in. I'm not really quite happy with how. Uh, PowerPoint does this because I only get part of the part of the table, even if I uh, resize it and stuff. But I guess the nice thing about this is if I double click it, at least you'll get the application. Let me close this to show you what happens actually when I double click it. So let's say I save this. This is zero. Let's uh, let's save that. And if I double click this, right? It's going to bring up that particular file because it's linked to it. And it'll bring it up in the native Excel. 
if I change this to, let's see, we have the data up here. Let's change that 16. Let's change that 16 to like 100, right? So that's very obvious. Click on that. Click Save. Here. Oh, so Excel was able to bring back the full um, objects, all the, the table and the charts within the PowerPoint. Let's just make this a little bit smaller now, and we'll pull it into the slide here, right? So Excel was able to, to, to pull it out. Maybe I had my cursor outside of the table, and it pulled a snapshot of the of the table and the chart. Uh, so Excel was kind of finicky in that way, I, I guess. You have to kind of work and see which one works best. But let's see how the linking works. So if I went into Excel and changed the number there, so here we have the Excel open, and if I change that to 100 and just saved it and went back into PowerPoint, you see that nothing happened here, but what we need to do is we need to uh, refresh that link. So I'm going to right click and click update link. So you can see Excel is kind of funny sometimes. It's not always that great in terms of this particular functionality where at first it was able to give me the view of the spreadsheet with the table and the chart but let's see if I change something else maybe I change this back to zero and click save and click on update link let's see what will happen to see if it's gonna figure it out no it didn't really do that maybe if I went to up link worksheet and click on edit and bring it back here let's change this back to 100 and close this click outside of it close that click save and now you notice that it's picked it up so it's a little bit finicky in terms of how it's representing the uh, the worksheet so you can you can see that there might be some issues that you might have to play around with it right now the last way I'll show you if you didn't want to deal with all this stuff you just wanted to have it open up in a logo all you need to do is just go to create from file and find the file and here I found my file double click that and not only do I have to select link so it will link to the original file I have to select displays icon right click OK and now that that particular file it's an icon and it will link to that particular um, Excel file that's on the folder it's not going to be uh, embedded within the document itself this icon is embedded and if I double click on it it's going to open up the Excel file in a separate application. Well, the separate application is not going to be contained within PowerPoint. You can see here it's there, right? And so if I made any changes here, maybe I'll make this zero and close it. Next time I open it up, it's going to be the same because I'll save it and it's going to link that, that particular file. If I double click to open it again, it's basically that file that's sitting out in my folder and whatever changes I did there, it's going to show up again. So those are the ways that we can embed and open up files in PowerPoint. There's one caveat that I have to put out there though. If we have this particular thing and we're doing a presentation, it's a little bit different. So if I went and I just wanted to do this slide in presentation mode and I wanted to open it, let's say I wanted to open it, I can double click and what it's going to do is it's going to end the slideshow because it's the last slide. The reason for that is you have to pull up an action because what happened is this is just an image now in slideshow view. What you need to do is you have to create an action for that. If I click on that, I go under insert action and I want it to open. That's what we need to do, right? Click on that. Now if I go back into slideshow view and I double click it or I just click it once, click it, it's going to open up the Excel application itself. Earlier, if I didn't have that action object in there, it's not going to open it up. So if we're doing a presentation and you want to stay in presentation mode and open up your Excel file, you have to put that action in. But if you're willing to go out of presentation mode to open it, then you don't need to have that. So that's the one caveat. Press escape here to get out of it. That's the one caveat about uh, the embedded objects there. So that's the way that you have to kind of work way around that, whether you're in presentation mode or not. So there's a different ways that we can embed and open up objects, Excel files within PowerPoint. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.